Good day and welcome back. Thanks for joining. Um, we're going to continue this video with control flow and we're going to be looking at another control flow statement called the switch statement. And the switch statement is really nice as you will see. But um, there is a feature of it called fall through that I must show you because um, you can easily um, fall into a pit with this, you know, write code that doesn't work the way you expect. So we're going to talk about that. Hopefully this won't take us too long, but I'll be stressing um, this fall through and some of the other capabilities of the switch statement. So let's get into it. Okay, so let's start by imagining we had a situation where we're going to present the user with um, a number of choices. So maybe it's some menu that we render with, you know, 10 things they have to choose from. And we're going to read their choice and then take action based on it. Now we can certainly do that with an if statement. If the choice is equals to one, then do so and so. If choice is equals to two, then do so and so. Now, the other way to do it is to use a switch statement. We could say, let's read their choice into some variable choice. And you could say, switch on choice and then take action based on that. So, this is um, where the switch statement comes in handy. It looks very much like an uh, if statement, but I think in terms of expressiveness and clarity, the switch statement sometimes seems to be clearer because it's saying, I'm going to switch or take a different action based on the choice and one thing I'm working with here is choice and that's that expression A and so with a switch statement you say is saying evaluate expression A and then based on what value I get for that I'm going to go to each case and evaluate the expression for those cases and if it's the match equal match is equality then I'll execute the statements in there now notice that break between cases that break is very 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 important you will almost always want to put break um, at the end of your statements after you, you know, for each case. If you don't, you're going to end up with something what we call a fall through, which is what I'm going to explain later. So if you remember, I said that um, a switch statement is pretty much like an if statement and you can use either one. But I said that uh, one of the things I think is for very long when you have a quite a large number of conditions that you have to check, five and so on, five different conditions, a switch statement seems to be clearer um, in expressing that, uh, especially if you're checking against the same um, expression as in the case of when I give the example of you're going to read a choice from the user and decide which uh, action to take based on their choice. Now, let's look at an example, some code here. And so I'm going to bring back the same example from our last um, video. And here I'm going to print out um, a statement if the last digit of the time, which is the last digit of the second, is that it contains is 2, 5, or 9. And so one way I can do is use a switch statement. You saw in the last video we use an if statement. So I just changed this to a switch statement. And the only thing I added here was a, is a default. Yeah, and I could have done the same thing um, with the if statement because this if statement, as you know, you can have is and then else, or you can have if else if, else if, and then, you know, keep going, and then eventually also terminate that with an else. So that last else, else on an if statement is equivalent to a default on a case, a switch statement. So hopefully you get the basics of a switch statement. Now let's talk about fall through. Unfortunately, you're still using the switch statement, but let's talk about a contrived example. Assuming that we're building an application, and we're going to ask the user upfront for the age, and based on the age, we're going to decide what set of questions to ask them. Basically, we're looking for three categories. Um, people who are not adults yet, under the age of 18. People who are adults and in school only. Or people who are adults and working. And so, regardless of who you are, we're going to always want to collect personal information. So that would be like case C. Now, if you're an adult and working, we'll just start with case C and just ask for your personal information. If you're an adult and in school, we'll start with case B. We'll ask you for your school information, then we'll ask you for your personal information. If you're not an adult, you're under 18 that is, we'll ask for your parents' information, then your current school information, and then, uh, um, then your personal information, okay? So if you're under 18, we'll ask for your parents' information, your school information, and then your personal information. If you're an adult in school, we'll start by asking you for your school information, then your personal information, which is case B, and fall through to C, which is, um, you know, always asking for personal information. So you could see, uh, we always execute case C regardless. So it makes sense to be able to 
have some way to fall through from the other cases when we start there. And so that's exactly what we're going to look at now in code. Let's go to the code. So you do this in a switch statement by removing the break. You remember I said earlier that you, may, you almost always want to use that break, that if you don't use that break, then the switch statement just literally, you know, execute, um, evaluates what's in the switch, and then start trying to find a case that matches. And then once it finds a match, it just continue executing all statement from there. So one of the things you can do is you can actually not put a break after a case, or you not even put statements there if you like. So in this example, we're going to say case, if the last digit matches is case, um, the first case to test against is the string two. If that doesn't work, then test against the string five. If that doesn't work, then test against the string nine. Now notice for those first two cases, case two and when it test matches case two and five, we don't have any statement there because we consider it Anything that matches with two, five, and nine, they're all the same. So we just print out one statement that says, hey, you know, the digit is one of those three. And then we break because we don't want to continue. We don't want to fall through to the default. Again, if you don't put a break there, it's going to fall through to default. Just as, oh, I don't have a break after case two. So it just falls through. So if case two matches, it would fall through five and nine. But five and nine don't have any statements. So that's, well, five doesn't have any statements. So it falls through to nine. And similarly, when I... Um, test for five, uh, if it matches there, five doesn't match, have any statements of its own, so it falls through to nine, okay? So two or five always fall through to nine and they don't have any statements of their own. So it's like reusing nine in a sense. And then we have a default here. So notice how this is more concise than the if statement that we had before. Now we could have done the same thing with the if statement. We would say if the last digit is equal to five or the last digit is equal to five, two or the last is equals to nine. Now we didn't show, I didn't show that in the if statement because we did not cover um, logical operators, you know, the truth, if else, and or um, sort of thing. So I mention it now, but we didn't cover it. So I didn't show you. When we talk about expressions um, a little bit more, then uh, I'll show that. So anyway, again, um, this is very powerful, but um, with great power come great responsibility. If you, it's better to start out by putting break after all your case statements. As soon as you write case X, Y, and Z, put a break after it. And then put in search your statements. And then if you intend to have fall through, then you comment out the break. So it's clear to somebody reviewing your code that you intended to remove the break. Um, if you don't do that, it's sometimes hard for people to know, well, um, did they make a mistake and not type it or what, right? So by putting it there and then commenting out, you say like, yeah, I typed it, but I actually don't want it here, so I'm commenting out. Um, just letting you know that though, there have been many a code written where people don't have unintentional fall through just because of how the case statement works. So that's a pitfall and you've been duly warned. Um, so hopefully you play with this. You can add more cases to this example, test it out, try it out. If you don't quite get it, let me know. But I think if you played it a little bit, you get it. No, there's one other thing I did not mention about this switch statement in JavaScript. Um, is that the type of expression you can evaluate, either um, especially for the case, it could be a number or it can be a string. Or it could be just any kind of expression. So you could actually put, you know, like 5 times x plus 9 in parentheses there and say, I want to match the last digit against something that I compute. And it will actually do that. That flexibility is not available in all languages. And there's no point in pointing out the languages where it's not available. But just know that oh, it's not available, but that's something that's available here. So I don't have an example of that. Um, I didn't want to make this video too long. So that's why I didn't show that. But just know that oh, you can do that. All right? So um, I hope you've learned something today and um, you'll learn to appreciate and use the switch statement correctly. It's also one of the more powerful um, control flow, just like the if statement. But again, uh, be careful with that break and using fall through. So don't go jumping into using fall through unless you're really sure you need it, okay? But other than that, have fun and see you in the next video. Bye.